Hi, my name's Max Walker-Williams, and today I've got a Hadira Hashgraph update for you. And what an update it is. I'm sure even if you're not that interested in Hadira Hashgraph, you must have heard some of the big news that's going on because it is seismic stuff. I'm gonna get into that. It even warrants having, for the first time ever, fireworks on the board or my version of fireworks. So that's what they are, believe it or not. Before I jump into the video, I just want to say I've also got a huge announcement for myself personally, for the YouTube's channel, for Twitter, and everything that I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to be making the announcement on Friday afternoon, next Friday, so a week yesterday, Friday the 28th. I'm going to be making the announcement on Twitter, on Instagram, and here on YouTube. So please hit that notification bell, subscribe. If you've never subscribed before, this is the time to do it. Trust me, you're not going to want to uh, miss this announcement. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to share this with you. And it's actually a two for one, because I've got two, two massive, life-changing for me, and potentially for you, announcements. Want you guys to be involved, so don't forget. Follow me over at Twitter, at mwalkerwilliams. Have a look at my Instagrams, that's down below. The links are all down below. And subscribe here on YouTubes if, uh, if you're not interested in the Twitters. Okay, that said, let's jump straight into this video. So what's been going on? Now there is loads of news, but because we've got such big stuff uh, uh, going on, I wanna, I'm want i gonna run through this. And by the way, uh, please be aware that I'm gonna be making another video on the open source announcement, Hedera going open source. And that video will be far longer. It'll explain the intricacies. It'll explain from a technical standpoint what it all means, what the impl implications could be for the ecosystem in general, for the crypto space, for the future, and for you if you're interested in working with Hedera. But for this video, I'm just going to be doing a top line. I'm just going to top line it for you, what's been going on, how it affects you, what's happening, what's going to happen in the future, and then I'm going to make another video uh, probably next week. It's going to be a lot longer and go into much more detail. So if you want more detail, just hold on till next week. Number one, we've got a new use case, okay? So these poor guys, by the way, because they, this is announced the same week that Hadira goes uh, uh, thing, because this is big news. This actually, this warrants a video in its own right, but in this, it's just a little side note. So that's how big and how amazing Hadira Hashgraph has become. Ma what would be massive announcements on other projects are just becoming another bullet point in an uh, overall update. Okay, so new use case. Neuron, a UK-based company, will be using Hadera Hashgraph to securely track drones. Okay, so what does this mean? If you're not, if you're not sure what a drone is, have a look at the video, uh, the castle tour. I did, my friend bought a castle. I did a tour with him about it. We use drones in that, and they're the, they're the cameras that fly and can film things from, from height. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this will be familiar with what a drone is. What you might not know is that drones aren't just the little ones and the medium-sized ones that we have with the cameras on them. They also do drones, obviously you've heard of drone strikes. The military use massive drones, which are more like small planes than they are sort of the camera drones. And then there's medium sized drones. And those drones are kind of the size of a decent car bonnet. And they can pick up pretty heavy stuff and deliver it. Now, they've not been able to do that practically in the real world up until now. Why? Because aviation rules and laws in the UK, the US, and most countries say that you can't fly a drone out of human sight. So if you can't see it, you can't fly it. Now, obviously, that's, that renders delivery or any practical use with drones uh, irrelevant because you know you have to be able to see the drone until now. These guys have been doing tests um, with backing last year with Hadira Hashgraph and they've securely tracked drones that are out of sight. And it's been proven now that it's completely safe and secure. So you can imagine, this isn't tiddlywinks, we're not messing about. This is, imagine a drone delivering something in London. You know, there's people's lives at risk. Literally, you could hit a building, you could hit a person, you can crash, you can drop out the sky. So you really, really need to be able to uh, trust that the feedback you're getting live instantaneously from the drone is secure, it's in order, and so on. And that's what Hadira Hashgraph, the software that Hadira Hashgraph offers, provides a neuron making this possible. So why is this such a big deal, Max? Why is this important? Well, there's three main reasons for, from a Hadira Hashgraph point of view, which is number one, high TPS. So TPS, of course, stands for transactions per second. And you can imagine, if there's loads of drones all over the place, you can imagine, and they're all constantly feeding back information. Uh, there's a tree there, there's a building there, and, they, and that's millions and millions and millions of transactions. Uh, uh, you know, certainly hundreds and thousands of transactions per drone, if there's hundreds of thousands of drones, you can imagine across America at, at any one point. 
um, then that's going to be loads and loads of transactions. And that's good because it just it's, it's more noise, it's more use, it's more fuel on the network uh, humming along. So it's a good thing. And it also helps prove, you know, sort of proof of stake. It proves that the, the system's working at scale, which is very important. Okay, so backdoor into other and larger companies. So what do I mean by backdoor into larger and other companies? So you might be thinking, this answers two questions. Okay, this is all great, but it's a bit sci-fi. What's the practical use of drones? What are we delivering exactly? Number one. And number two, what's the backdoor into other large companies? So Amazon have been pretty vocal for, as an example of using drones for delivery. So what they uh, are already trialing, by the way, this isn't like, oh, in 2035 or whatever. This is happening right now. Very shortly, when you order certain small things, uh, I ordered this mobile phone from Amazon or the, the holder I've got on the back of it. And at the moment, that's got to be packaged up, mostly done by machines, automated. And then it goes, a man picks it up, puts it on a van, the van drives, and he drives around and he's running back and forth and, and it's very labor intensive, fuel intensive and so on. What if we could attach that to a drone in uh, that and four other small things to a drone, the drone sets off, the drone's electric, so there's no fuel, none of that stuff, you know, um, fossil fuels. It flies, so there's no traffic, there's no potential crashes, there's no car insurance. Uh, in that sense, and it just flies over. It, it, it can travel as the crow flies so in a straight line rather than zigzagging. It lands in your garden or, or at your house or on your roof or in your flat, whatever, at a balcony, at a place to be ag ag agreed beforehand. And it releases the package and flies off or even can even drop it in your hand. It pings you on an app, you're, the drone is landing, you go outside, and if you've got a return, you can attach that to the drone. The drone confirms that's been done by camera. You attach it to the drone and the drone takes it. So you can actually return stuff from your own home too. So you're returning stuff from your own home, you're receiving deliveries. Now imagine the cost savings to Amazon. I, of course, there are some things that they have to iron out, you know, in big cities. If you live in a block of flats, how the hell do you have a delivery? But you get the point, I hope. <clears throat> if you live in a home, in a house, with a garden, there's no reason why Amazon can't deliver stuff, products to you uh, direct via drone. And the cost savings are incredible. So that's one use case, and that's how this is a backdoor into large companies. Because if Amazon are going to use a third party uh, company uh, that they'll end up buying, presumably, but if they're using them, when these guys are pitching the likes of Amazon, Tesco's, Walmart, or whoever it may be that does home delivery, they're going to be saying, well, how can you guarantee to us that all the deliveries were made? What if customers claim they weren't? Ah, because it's, it's securely uh, logged on a network that can't be changed, and that's called Hedera Hashgraph. So the name Hedera Hashgraph is being mentioned in rooms with these big companies, and that's a great thing. So it's, it's getting the name out there into rooms that it might not have got into in, uh, otherwise. So that's a great thing. So that might be the back door into other larger companies. Another really important use case for this, if you think it's all a bit wishy-washy, Imagine there's a, somebody who's a donor. So they're, they're in a car crash and there's a, there's a young person in London who desperately needs a heart and there's a car crash uh, in Birmingham, God forbid, and somebody is dying and they're critical and they're going to die and their heart's there. At the moment, they call the, uh, a register, the register calls the hospital. The hospital then, if it has a helicopter, sends two pilots, they come from home, they get in the helicopter, they fly to the scene, they land on the motorway, uh, they, they, they package up the heart, they load it up, they fly back to London, and, and that's pretty quick compared to the alternatives, which is motorbike, and that can be true of blood, organs, whatever it may be. But the motorbike, sometimes they crash. They're only human, they're being driven, and then the organs are lost, and the, um, or the or worst case and best case, the, the time is, is, is delayed. Um, and cars even worse, because the car's got to get all the way to the scene, it's got to get all the way back, the fuel, the time. Now imagine that the emergency responders, they turn up, and the, yeah, yeah, so the, this person is, uh, it needs blood or whatever. The hospital have drones. The emergency responders have drones and they can attach things to a drone and send it to the hospital in London. There's no coming, so you save half the time straight off the bat by not having to come from the hospital. And on top of that, the drone just goes straight up into the air, flies as the crow flies straight to. It's far cheaper because you're not hiring two helicopter pilots. You're not having to fuel the helicopter, the cost of the helicopter itself, which is millions and millions of pounds or dollars. And all the stuff that goes with it, or motorbike, man on a motorbike, car crashes, uh, traffic lights, if it's in a car, traffic, traffic jams, all of that melts away and you just have, you know, somebody who needs blood and somebody who gets it almost instantaneously, uh, depending on distance, via drone. The drone just up, flies across, 
delivers it and thing. Imagine that in war zones. Imagine that in disaster uh, relief where people need water and they need shovels and equipment to dig people out and they need it now. Rather than sending it down in trucks and all that sort of stuff, you just attach it to a drone, you send it. And these guys are at the forefront in the UK of delivering that dream. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. Massive, massive use case and a great thing. And literally, it just proves, uh, once again, that people are willing to put their lives in the hands of the technology that is Hadira Hashgraph. So really, really good thing. And then the last one, proof of concept in a highly regulated space. So I've kind of touched on this a little bit already. Uh, it's just nice, it's another big tick in the box, another stamp of approval for Hadira Hashgraph. The aviation, you know, as I said before, it's not a joke, it's not backgammon, it's not chess. It, it's, it's flying things over people's homes, over people's heads. You know, it's delivering blood, it's delivering ammo, uh, bullets to a front line, to guys who are pinned down. It's, it's all that stuff and it's being done on Hadira Hashgraph. So really, really important. And there's probably loads of other use cases I can't even think of. Okay, so over to Hedera Hashgraph completes over 2 billion transactions. So, fantastic news. And again, this is just more, another, yet another stamp in the, of approval that we've gone through 2 billion transactions. Now, you might be saying, and rightly so, if you don't know, put this in context, Max. What does 2 billion transactions mean? It sounds a lot. Is it a lot? Can you put some context into that? Of course I can. BTC, Bitcoin, 700 million transactions completed in 12 years. So Hedera Hashgraph, 2 billion in circa four years. So, oh, and by the way, these numbers before we start are all circa. So please don't leave a comment on the YouTubes below saying, uh, I think you'll find Bitcoin's 12 years, three days and six minutes uh, old. Uh, yeah, these are all circa. So Bitcoin, 700 million transactions in 12 years. Hedera Hashgraph, 2 billion. Cardano, ADA, 27 million, I don't know what the hell these guys have been doing, but 27, not much by the looks of it, 27 million transactions in four years. Point of reference, Hadira did 32 million transactions last week. 27 million, four years, 32, five transaction, transaction, million transactions more last week. And then Ethereum, one of the most popular, or one of the most well-known second to Bitcoin, because it's been around a long time, because it's got a, a f very few but big use cases like OpenSea, very public, um, and it's been in the papers a lot because it's of what it's doing to the planet and so on. Ethereum, 353 million transactions in six years, and again, two billion transactions. So to kind of put that in context for you, it's really impressive, particularly this number. That's the other thing that's very important. The line for Hedera, you might think, okay, well, Hedera's two billion transactions and four years, so that's 500 million transactions a year. It's actually not. It's more like 100 million transactions the first year and so on. So the line is not linear. It, it's, like, it's much more like this. So bear that in mind because this number, so you know, it'll take us three years to get to one billion, one year to get to another billion, and then it might be a billion a month. So bear that in mind because it's just going to get, you know, we're just going to accelerate further and further away from other projects. And it's worth reminding, I know we've got a lot of plates spinning in the Hedera ecosystem at the moment, but there's a big plate spinning over in the corner. We mustn't forget that we're still yet to learn a new Fortune 10 use case is yet to be announced. So um, Lehman himself said, I think uh, three or four weeks ago, that there was a Fortune 10 uh, use case coming on. Um, it's not these guys, um, and that hasn't, still hasn't been announced yet. I guess they're doing some more uh, trials and tests before they announce. Um, and... We've also seen um, 10,000 transactions on the test net. So I actually discuss, I talk about this in my last uh, Hedera Hashgraph update video. And if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link in the description below for you. So probably watch that one first before watching the rest of this. So what is the test net, by the way? It's just, just so people understand. Imagine you've got a huge pond over here, which is more like the ocean. It's massive, it's like the sea. So you've got an ocean here, and on the side of the ocean, you've got a much smaller, shallower pond. Now you can, they react exactly the same way. So whatever you do in the pond, it will happen in, it would have happened in the ocean and whatever you don't do in the pond and so on and so forth. So there's, there's, they're, they're mirrors of each other. It's just this one's a bit smaller. So that's kind of the way I would describe it. And someone, and I'm, I'm guessing, this is a, 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 an assumption by me, but I'm guessing these two things are related. And the Fortune 10 are practicing whatever they need to do and it's, it's taking Hedera Hashgraph and throttling it up to 10,000 transactions per second. And this is no joke, this is a big deal. And the reason for that is because there are a few projects that I believe that can actually get to 10,000 transactions per second or more. There are even more uh, projects that claim to be able to get to 10,000 uh, transactions or, or more, but very few have actually done it. 
And this is confirmed, third party, confirmed. I've looked at it, it's, take it as fact. They are getting 10,000 transactions per second and it was holding there for, for quite a while, which is, plays into the 32 million in the last week. So this is a huge thing. And the reason it's a huge thing, think about it. How many businesses do you know that need 10,000 or create 10,000 transactions per second? You know, Walmart's a massive company. Imagine their checkouts. You know, I don't know, maybe they are. Maybe they're doing a lot more. I can't really wrap my brain around it, but you have to think about it. How many um, items are going through Walmart scanners every second? Is it 10,000 a second? I mean, that's massive. So maybe it is, but it's e either way, it's a huge use case. Okay, so that's those three things, big things. I'm probably gonna look at those again uh, uh, as, we, as we move uh, further on. It'll be interesting to see how quickly I have to make a three billion transactional video for you. Okay, over to the big one. Drum roll, please. Fireworks. Okay, Hedera goes open source. This is fantastic news. Okay, what does it mean? So what it means is up until now, you've been able to build things on Hedera, but what you weren't able to do is without permission is use their code for an application without their permission. Now, this has been a bit of a sticking point and it's been a bit of an elephant in the room for certain types of uh, users and developers and investors in the crypto space. Why is that? Okay, fair question. The best way for me to describe it, I think, is that it's like imagine using, you can go and download Microsoft Word without having to call Bill Gates and get his permission. You can then take Microsoft Word, Word and you can write the Harry Potter novels you can then print those off and sell them, and you've done all of that and become a massive success in creating the whole Harry Potter franchise without having ever spoken to Bill Gates or anyone at Microsoft, uh, that's open source. So that's, you're able to, yes, you have to pay for it once to buy it, to get it and whatever, um, unless you download a dodgy copy. Um, but the point is you've had no interaction with Microsoft to write the Harry Potter books. That is open source. You're using their thing, but you've adapted it in such a way, and then you've, you've created something completely new with it, but it's built on that system. Now, closed source is the same thing, except you can't download, without breaking the law, you can't download the word uh, and write Harry Potter books. You have to ring uh, Hadira Hashgraph. You have to get their permission. You have to prove to them what you're doing, why you're doing it, who you are, so on and so forth. And then, only then, can you write your Harry Potter novels. Why is that a problem for some people in the community? Well, the reason it's a problem for some people in the community is because the obvious question would be, why? Why wouldn't you want us using Microsoft Word without your permission? Is it because we're gonna find problems with the way it works, or it doesn't quite do things that you claim it does, or it's not quite as efficient, and it doesn't actually, you, you know, it doesn't have much choice in making the letters smaller or bigger, even though you've claimed it has. When I type, it's very laggy, it's very slow, it doesn't actually do as many transactions, as many words as you said it does, and so on and so forth. And the only people you allow to use it are people that have to sign something saying that they can't uh, badmouth you on the internet and friends, people who come in and wouldn't bad, badmouth you anyway. They love the project, they believe in it, whatever. Maybe they're paid uh, actors. They come into the space, they're allowed to use the software, they use it, it's not as good as, it, as it's claimed to be or it's junk or whatever. And, uh, uh, but, but they won't talk badly about it on the internet and they're the only people you're allowed to use it. That is what, I believe some people have, a, have a, an issue with closed source. Why wouldn't you just open it up to the world? Now, what I have been saying and what Hadira Hashgraph have been saying in a way uh, since in inception is, no, 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 that's not the case. What we want to do is build something that's truly revolutionary. You're all using typewriters. We want to build Microsoft Word. But before we just give it out left, right, and rhubarb to any, any Tom, Dick, and Harry, we want to make sure that it works. We want to stress test it, we want to bend it and heat it and cool it and make sure that it's robust and it works before we put it out there and before people go off and write all sorts of novels and all sorts of things. And by the way, people can take Microsoft Word and write you know, um, Nazi literature. So people can take it and do bad with it as well as good. Uh, and they wanted to just, I, I, and I understand this, they, want, they had a baby and they wanted to make sure that it grew up to be able, before they sent it out into the world, to be uh, strong and have a good immune system and, and be and usable and, uh, and make sure that all the claims that they were making were correct. Now they can't, and that's great, that's fine. I, I think that's the right way to do things, by the way. Much better than just to chuck junk out into the world. Learn your craft, hone your craft, test it. Very, very important. Test, improve, test, improve. 
And then once you get to a certain stage where you believe it's, it, it can, uh, it's grown up, the baby's grown up and it can go out into the world on its own and stand up on its own two feet and people can then, you know, take the ball and play with it, um, we have to test it. So what do we do? We invite friends like um, uh, Google or, or uh, Coupon Bureau or Eftpos or people like this, big, big, serious, serious players, and we say, would you like to try this new uh, word? Put your typewriter down. We've got this new thing you can try out. It's like Word and, and, and try that and see what, and they go, wow, it's revolutionary. Not only is it fantastic, we want to actually put our name to this and be a part of it. So we'd like to become a governing council member. Wow, fantastic, come on in. Play around with it, try and break it, try it out, rev it, get your guys on it, you know, and thing. Use it and see how you get on. And now that's happened, but not just in one industry for one kind of use case. That's happened for early warning systems for missiles, saving people's lives. It's happened for recording the testimonies and the witness statements of Holocaust survivors. You know, uh, it's prevented billions of pounds of fraud and therefore reduced the price of, of food for people in America because the, 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 the companies haven't got to pass on the losses to the, cons to the honest consumer by the coupon bureau. You know, it's made banking quicker, easier and cheaper payments for in Australia with FPOS and will continue to improve people's lives. Um, but they wanted to test it first, and I think that's absolutely fine. I think it's the right way to do it. Rather than go, mm, yeah, we kind of think this works, um, Bitcoin, and, th and just have at it and chuck it out into the ecosystem. And then, you know, in 2012, it gets hacked uh, by accident. Uh, luckily, it's white hat hackers, and, and all of a sudden, somebody can create as many Bitcoins as they like. True story. So to prevent that, and so that drones aren't falling out of the sky, to have a serious thing that we can actually all take forward, Hedera just made it closed source, patented, so that they could build something nice and strong and robust. Now that baby has grown up and it's now a, a young lady, a young man, and ready to go out into the open world. And that's what this is. This is, we're going open source. So I'm, I'm gonna do a longer video about this, as I said, but just, I'm top lining it for you today. Okay, so what does it all mean? Well, I've written down the sort of five most important things that you need to know and how it's gonna affect you with Hedera going open source. I've spoken uh, to my friend Christian Hasker. He's the chief marketing officer over at Hedera Hashgraph, and I can't tell you how excited he is. So we've had a bit of an informal chat just on Twitter, and we were just chatting away, and I just I, I asked him a couple of questions that I just wanted to firm up before I made this video. So this is kind of, these are my words, uh, except for the quotes, and I'll tell you where the quotes from Christian, but these are my words, kind of guided by his knowledge. Okay, so what does this mean for you? Number one developers. You can have, I could invent something that's a thousand times better than even Hedera Hashgraph in terms of software, but it's all for nothing if nobody uses it. Maybe I have, and you, how, but how would you know if I don't advertise and tell people and, and educate people on how to use it and so on and so forth. So, you know, we'd all be riding horses if, if Henry Ford never taught anyone how to drive the motor car and then sold them and advertised and so on. And how do you do that? Well, we need developers. Now, there are two types of developers. Like most things in life, there are those who are coming into the space new and are learning, and there are those that have been around the block a bit and they know what they're doing, uh, and they need to be treated differently. Okay, so what do we do? And this is from Christian. Easiest, he wants to make, in 2022, this year, he wants to make Hedera Hashgraph the easiest place to build. He wants to make it the easiest project for new developers to learn and build on. How do we do that? Well, education, tutorials and courses, um, a community, feedback, uh, forums, and that sort of stuff. So on Coursera and Udemy. Uh, two websites, I'll put the links in the description below, and they're where you can go and, um, uh, and learn about different things. In this case, Adira Hashcraft. So this is for the new guys. So if you are oh, oh, girls, uh, so if you're thinking of writing an app, you want to, you know, you've got a great idea and you want to do it yourself at home, or just a project, or something for school or university or whatever, you can you, now, for the first time ever, you're going to be go, able to go on these websites. You're going to be able to learn from scratch, from from knowing nothing, all the way to being a developer, and you can do that with no formal education, but you can do that hands-on in the Hedera Hashgraph with the learning tutorials. And they wanna make it the easiest place on earth in the crypto space to learn. So that's for the new guys. Okay, so number two, for the guys, that are, for the developers that already are developing in the space, in the crypto space, or out of the crypto space, and are looking to get into the crypto space, but are developers and they don't need to learn the very basics with the tutorials over here. 
So what are we going to be doing with those guys, you know, which is a big proportion of people? So we're, with the smart contract devs, we're starting, and I underline starting here, because what comes next is even more exciting, but that's for another time. Smart contract devs are starting with EVM compatible networks, ETH, um, targeted campaigns, one-to-one -one functionality. Okay, so what does that all mean, Max? It sounds like gobbledygook. Okay, EVM compatible networks. So think ETH. So what does that mean? It means ETH virtual machine. Okay, so what does that mean? What it means is, We've got the tutorials for all the new guys coming in over here, and over here, you've currently got, hopefully watching this video, a developer that's building an incredible app or website or whatever it may be on uh, Ethereum. Now, if you want, if this is, if Ethereum's open source and Hedera Hashgraph is open source, and you've got a developer who doesn't want to uh, ring up Microsoft and speak to um, um, Bill Gates and ask for permission to build his thing. He doesn't want to speak to anybody else. Not for any uh, perverse reason, just because he wants to build his own thing. Maybe he's worried and paranoid that someone's going to steal his idea. Maybe he is a, a, an extreme introvert, which is true with a lot of the developers I know. And he just wants to be left alone. He wants to sit in his basement. He wants to create this incredible piece of technology that's going to change all our lives. And he doesn't want to talk to anyone about it. He just wants to get on with it. He can now do that with Hedera Hashgraph. But there's a problem. He knows how to do it, he knows what he's got to do, and he understands that Hedera Hashgraph is, you know, a thousand times cheaper, more environmentally friendly, carbon neutral, more secure than Ethereum, and so on and so forth, and all the things that we already know to be true. But he's learned and spent a long time doing it, all his skills on Ethereum. Well now, we have one-to-one -one functionality, and he knows we have one-to-one -one functionality because Adira Hashcraft is now going to be targeting uh, with campaigns to educate developers, experienced developers in the space, to let them know that if you want to move over from the likes of Ethereum to Hadira Hashcraft, you can do so seamlessly because the way the network, the Ethereum network behaves and the way the code is written, which is what this is, the EVM compatible, the way the code is written is the same here as it is here. So, yeah, good to go back to the Microsoft Word example. If you click, right click, hold spacebar equals bold lettering, guess what? Over here, right click, mouse, press spacebar equals bold lettering. So it's exactly the same. So the only thing that changes uh, for, for, from a practical point of view, from a user point of view, is just you take off Microsoft Word and you put Hedera Hashgraph on the top banner, you change the colors and away you go. But everything else remains the same, except for the fact that it's cheaper, more secure and so on and so forth. So why wouldn't you move over if you know that? If you don't know that, or it isn't open source, then that's why you don't move over. But we're gonna change that with two things. Number one, it is open source. We've changed that tech but they've got to know about it. So, and that's where the foundation comes in with the EVM compatible networks, targeted campaigns. That's the important bit, it's getting the word out there. Okay, number three, awareness advertising, events, sponsorship. And this is a direct quote. I asked him if I could do it from Christian. Christian said that uh, Hedera wants to be everywhere in the Web3 audience in 2022. So something that Hedera has not really done before is sponsoring events, um, more open hackathons, uh, bigger prizes, uh, more, more sponsorship of, of, of events in general, um, and awareness advertising, letting people know, here we are, this is who we are, this is how we work, this is why you should care, and you know, have a go kind of thing. Oh, and by the way, if you want to to build, here's some videos. If you're already building, this is why you should move over and you can do it seamlessly. So this is a big, big thing. This is something that Hedera has never really done before. And I hope you understand why now that I've said, because they were just testing and getting ready to release. But now we're releasing, we're going live. The project is, is, is live, if you like. So that's gonna be really, really interesting to see. And I cannot wait to see some of their advertising campaigns. So point four, the foundation is one to three. It's not Hadira Hashgraph. So the foundation, when I say developers, when I say uh, experienced developers, when I say the advertising campaigns, the awareness campaigns, that I'm talking about Hadira Foundation. I am not talking about Hadira Hashgraph. And if you're an investor like me, then obviously, like I said, um, that th this is gonna put your mind at rest. Why? Because the foundation is advertising to the grassroots uh, newbie developers. It's advertising to the experienced developers and trying to bring them over to this uh, new network that's open source, and it's the foundation that's doing that. 
Hadira Hashgraph is gonna to continue to do what Hadira Hashgraph has always done, which is communicate with huge corporate companies, you know, trying to bag, I think I've put here, Hadira's still catching corporate whales. So it's still trying to, you know, uh, 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 attract your Googles and your Amazons and your Apples and that sort of thing at that level. And I'm very corporate and very, um, um, not boring, but, but serious conversations about, you know, serious, serious things like these guys who are flying drones over people's heads. Uh, and the foundation is the ones that are gonna be doing the retail uh, uh, advertising. And the reason that's important, and I think it's the best of both worlds, is because over here, you've got the guys who are a bit more fun. You know, you've got the fun, fun, fun younger brother who's, who's engaging with people and he's teaching and, you know, and, and, and he's advertising and he's sponsoring and he's you know, having fun with it. And that's all very well and good, and that's absolutely fantastic for people who are looking to get into the space, developers, smaller and medium enterprise businesses, fantastic. It's a completely different market and a different world and a different language that, that's spoken over here with the corporate, big, big blue chip, you know, FTSE 500 kind of thing, uh, companies over here. So Hadir will carry on being the boring old, old, older brother, the grown up over here. And the foundation is now spreading the word at, at a grassroots level. So really, really important and fantastic, I think, because, you know, mum and dad haven't left forever. You know, they're, they're still here, so that's good. Okay, point number five. Lehman and some Hadira team are moving over to Swirls. Again, I will be creating another video. I'll explain exactly what Swirls is, who they are, what they do, what's happening, what it means in much more detail. But for this video, number five, Lehman and say, um, some Hadira team moving over to Swirls to concentrate uh, building on Hadira, on. This is amazing because it means the great man himself, uh, Lehman, is gonna be uh, working on Hadira rather than in Hadira. Why is this important? Well. I don't want to say that Lehman's work is done because it's not, because there's always things to be done. But much like my business with the hotels, I'm no longer, and I used to, by the way, check people in. I wasn't checking people in. I'm not checking people out. I haven't checked somebody in for a couple of years. It doesn't mean I don't care about the business. It doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. And it doesn't, know I, it doesn't mean I don't know who's staying in my hotels. What it means is I've been able to work on the business rather than in the business. And that's exactly the same. And that's a healthy thing and a good thing, and it should happen. And I think that's exactly what's happening with Lehman and Mance. They have both been working in Hadira. They're now gonna be working on Hadira. And the reason this is, for me, this is the most exciting thing. Point five is the most exciting thing written on this board because I've met them. I know who they are. I know what they're capable of. Can you imagine if you had, and I'm not saying he is, by the way, but can you imagine if you've got Lehman working on a crypto wallet that uh, uh, will be built with Hadira? Imagine how cool that's gonna be. It's gonna be, you know it's gonna be the best crypto wallet in the space ever. And it's gonna be with Hadira. So that's a great thing because if people wanna use this incredible wallet, it brings them to Hadira. And then Lehman concentrates on building uh, something that helps with an app that does something amazing and cool and seamless and secure. And then everybody wants to use that piece of, of software and license it, and it runs, the fuel in the car is Hadira. So, so it's fantastic, it's a really great thing, and I can't wait to see what they start coming out with, because it's gonna be amazing. Because you've had this genius working on this incredible thing for all this time. He's now taking a step back, we're working on things now that go on top of that, and it's just, I cannot wait to see what these genuine geniuses come up with. So, so exciting. Okay, so you put this all together, and what have we got? This here is something I wanted to explain uh, now, and the time is right. It's really, really important, especially now with the price where it is, and, th and that's happening for another completely different reason, because unfortunately, the entire cryptographic uh, uh, space industry is still, because it's in its infancy, is still frustratingly connected to Bitcoin. So if something happens over, right over here in the Bitcoin world, like for example, Russia saying, or China saying, we're gonna ban Bitcoin mining, all the corporate people that are invested in this, they panic, they sell, the price drops. But that's happening all the way over here and has absolutely nothing to do with, and actually might be beneficial to Hadira Hashgraph that's all the way over here. The harder it gets for Bitcoin, the easier it gets for Hadira Hashgraph. The more people don't want mining and destruction and all that kind of stuff, the more it helps and more it underlines the use cases for Hadira. The less people that are looking down into Bitcoin and look up and around for a solution, look at Hadira. So even though it might be in the long run beneficial, unfortunately, it pulls the whole market down. And the only way I can describe it really in a simple way is to imagine gold. Imagine Bitcoin is gold. If the price of gold goes down, 
and you have a jewelry maker over here and they make a lot of jewelry out of gold. Although the jewelry has still got its, its, its functionality, you can wear it, it's still beautiful and still has the brand and stuff. This company isn't uh, big enough yet uh, as an industry, is the industry isn't big enough, the, the gold jewelry industry isn't old enough or big enough yet for the uh, price of gold to not affect it. So what I mean by that is, in real life, you can go into a shop and if you're just buying a gold chain, the price of gold will affect the gold chain. However, if you go into a shop that's a famous like um, Gucci or Chanel or, or whatever, a Cartier, and you buy a Cartier gold band, the price of gold does not affect the price of the Cartier gold band because the brand is so strong and, 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 the, and so old and so well established that it's just the rarity of the ring, the design, the intricacy. When you go in to buy the ring, the price of the gold has no real reflection on the price of the ring. Hedera Hashgraph will get to Cartier status in the crypto space, as will, as, will, as will many of the projects. But for right now, unfortunately, Cartier is four years old. All of the industry as a whole is only, is, is only a few years old. Most of the major projects are only a few years old. And so when the price of gold goes up or down, it does affect the price of the jewelry in the window but that will change as I've explained. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that's a good analogy for you. Um, okay, so what does this explain? There are two ways of advertising anything in life, but particularly true with cryptocurrency projects. What are they? Well, oh, sorry, I should say there's three. So the Squid Games, that scam, that is this. So the orange bar represents hype, i.e. advertising, awareness, you know, Jay-Z rap signals, music videos, all that kind of stuff, uh, colorful ads, logos, all that stuff goes into here, hype, advertising, okay, which is important, it has its place. The blue box represents substance, utility, security, cost to transact, speed of transactions, number of transactions per second total, use cases, and all that kind of stuff. So that is utility, and that is hype. If you're a scam, you have that. You have all hype, no utility. Uh, and it eventually obviously collapses. Now, most, in fact, I'd go as far to say, because I can't think of any others, all, and that's a big shout, but all other projects look like this. They have some utility. They can do six, seven, 10, 100 transactions per second. Um, they are more secure than a lot of fiat systems. They are uh, cheaper, some of them cheaper than Swift or Bax or you know, traditional fiat systems. And so they have utility. Built on that utility is a whole ton of hype. Very cool use cases, NFTs projects, celebrity endorsements, cool logos, cool symbols, cool videos, mentions in rap songs and all that sort of stuff. That is hype and this is what you have. This is, if I'm honest, I'm gonna put some names to it. This is Bitcoin, this is Solana. You know, um, we're saying you know, over here we're hyping and oh, it's fantastic and great and stuff but it keeps crashing every two seconds. You know, it crashes left, right, and rhubarb. Uh, this is Ethereum. Oh, Ethereum, you know, yes, it has some utility. Yes, it can transact. Yes, it's, it's, it's better than the old world system in most cases, but then it costs $938. I got quoted two days ago, $938 to send $15. Well, it's just not even worth men, it's just nonsense but it's got great hype, OpenSea, and so on and so forth. So this is Ethereum, this is Sol, this is Bitcoin. Now, you, the, I'm, I'm not saying which is right or which is wrong, you decide. So this is one way of doing it. You design something, you, 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 know, you sort of build it on the way down, if you like, as a saying. Uh, you build something, you come up with something, and you don't really fully test it, and, 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 and it's good enough, and then you, big hype, send it out. The other way, which is more frustrating for short-term thinking traders and that, those kind of people in, in anything, in, in, but particularly in the crypto space, the other way of doing it is this way around. is making sure that you have a huge, big old box of substance and you test it and you invite friends and family and Google and Eftpos to come in and kick it around, beat it to hell, test it, bend it, stretch it, burn it, cool it, rag it around, you know, go nuts, prove me wrong, show me why this won't work in the real world, go for it, and build substance, and have a governing council, and make it as decentralized as, uh, as it possibly can be, and if you don't believe Hadir is decentralized, uh, you should watch the video that I created exactly about that.
So, so this is the other way of doing it, and this is where Hadira Hashcraft is today. It's this substance with that much hype. And it's most of this hype, by the way, comes from people like me making these videos. It's the community. Otherwise, you could probably half this box again. Because, as I've said, it's only the foundation that now has had its uh, chains broken and is gonna start doing a much better job, hopefully, of what I've been doing for the last couple of years, which is trying to educate people and tell them to get into this project uh, for all the reasons that I've been harping on about for so long. The good news for the world, for everyone, is that we're about to take this size box here and attach it to this size box here. So we're gonna have a big old box of substance and a big old box of hype advertising, sponsorship, and so on and so forth. And that is why it's such an exciting time to be in the Hedera Hashcraft project. Because once you take this box and attach it to that box, you're gonna have fireworks. Okay. Thanks ever so much for watching, as always. Don't forget, next Friday, Friday the 28th, please support me on that. Um, I've got a huge announcement and I can't wait, I really can't wait to share it with you guys. But like Hadira Hashgraph, but on a much, 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 much smaller scale, I want to make sure that what I'm telling you is right, that it's in, it's locked in, it's secured, it's done, and I can tell you all about it without being embarrassed. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you soon.